back on the leaf project. So I listened to my audience and an overwhelming number of you said to do the battery upgrade swap. So in preparation right now, I've got the car jacked up and I'm gonna take out the three uh, undercovers. Also another reason, another argument for keeping this car, these tires are like essentially brand new. They all have deep tread. So that's like close to a thousand in value alone. I've taken out some of the clips and some of them like this already had clear damage on the head. So someone's probably been in here before and taken those covers off. My guess is that they did a warranty replacement because this car probably was below eight bars of health. And that's the warranty is eight years, 100,000 miles, they'll restore it to above. So I'm guessing they might have put in a used pack, restored it, and then it degraded again quickly. Because this car right now is 2025 and it's one year out of warranty. This is the middle cover now. And these fasteners don't have any marks on them at all. So maybe they just took out the front one because that's where the high voltage lead is. And maybe they had to do some sort of service there or recall or something. But I take back what I said earlier. This doesn't look like it's been touched at all. The middle or the rear. At the very rear here under the trunk... This is just a cover, and it's like a foot tall, three feet long, and the width between the wheels. And the actual bottom of the trunk is up at this plane. I wonder why they didn't just make this part of the trunk for extra storage, but this is quite a bit of space that's not utilized, and it's got this cover for aero underneath. Also, while I'm waiting for parts, I figured I'd see if I can knock this dent out. It's kind of the only cosmetic flaw in the entire car. Your eye gets attracted to that right away, so I'll see if I can remove that. Alright, I got it fixed pretty decent. I mean, it's still obviously a dent. But I'll finish that up and do some uh, trim matched paint there to make it look a little better. Alright, so I'm here at LKQ to pick up the 62 kilowatt hour 2022 Leaf battery I bought. It had 39,000 miles on it. And it was in Las Vegas. I'm in Salt Lake, and this is a multi-location company, so they actually shipped it up to Salt Lake to me for free. So it couldn't be any easier. So let's load it in the van. Hopefully it fits. And we got the battery loaded in. Uh, initially, I thought I was gonna have to go get a different car because it was too wide to fit between here and here. But then called a friend and came up with the idea to stack three pallets to get it up and over to have that extra width. So now the battery's in and now I'm gonna strap it down because this is a little high up. I don't want the battery to slide and that just would not be good. Here's my invoice. Uh, you can see it came from Las Vegas. There's 38,000 miles on the car. Battery price was forty-seven sixty-four. Then they charged me a three fifty core. If I return the old battery, I get that back. I don't think I'm gonna do that because I think I can get more money for this selling it to someone that wants to use it for solar energy storage or maybe a golf cart battery or something like that. I think I can get a lot more money for it. Um, and then after all that, there's another four hundred on tax. So fifty-five thirty-five is what I paid for this. It says here, warranty covers part replacement only, does not pay labor. There's an option to add on additional warranty beyond six months and also labor, but it's a lot more money. And since I'm doing it myself, uh, they wouldn't honor the labor anyway, since I wouldn't have any invoice showing what I paid. So I went with just the basic six-month warranty that's included in the price. Uh, this was the cheapest one that was within a reasonable distance of Utah. So we'll see how this turns out. Got out of the van. Going into the shop. All right, so unboxing the battery, it all looks pretty good. Uh, everything seems pretty straight except 
here this is dented that's not that big of a deal it's just a mounting point probably from the forklift process but here there's kind of a dent in the side there I hope that's okay and that didn't cause any batteries inside to shift I hope that won't cause an isolation problem but I think it's probably gonna be okay so here you can see it's 62 kilowatt hour so it is what I thought I bought and then this is a little loose, which maybe some water got in there, but maybe it's okay. That's my only concern. And then I wanted to check this battery before I fully commit and swap it in to the car. So I've connected to the power ground can high and can low pins on the connector here, which I have connected to my OBD2 Leaf Spy and 12 volt battery. Uh, I'll put the link in the description for Dalla's GitHub on how to make this. So now I'm going to be able to read the stats on this battery to make sure it's good and there's no issues before we put it in. So this first screenshot shows the state of charge at 82.8%. That's good. Uh, if it were up in the 90 or close to 100, uh, that's not good for a battery to be at a high state of charge and sitting for a while. So it's nice that this is in the 80s when it's been sitting on the shelf. And lower left, uh, it's reading all of the temperatures of the battery. It's between 54.5, 53.6, and that was pretty accurate relative to the temperature it was that day. This next screenshot shows the histogram of all the individual cell voltages. And this shows that they're all balanced and they're all quite close together. At the bottom of the graph, it shows the max voltage difference at 24 millivolts. That's very good, it's much better than the battery in the car currently. So these voltages show good balance and that's a good sign for the pack. And this last screenshot is the important one. At the top you can see the state of health is 90.1%. If you remember the pack in the car currently is in the 60s. Also the HX is the ability of the battery to charge and discharge energy. It's at 99.7%. The bad battery in the car currently was in the 40s. And then this line with the odometer quick charge and level one, level twos is there's not really relevant data there because this battery currently isn't hooked up to an ECU or a VCU. And so I think that's why it's showing a little funky there. I do know the odometer of the car because uh, it was on my receipt that I got from LKQ. So now I'm gonna do a quick calculation estimate on the life of the battery remaining. My first assumption is that at most you can get a thousand cycles out of the battery. My second assumption is that you lose about 3% capacity per year. So on the car currently, there's 78,000 miles on it. Uh, the EPA range was 107 miles times a thousand cycles. That is 73% of the battery's life has already been used due to mileage. Now when I add in the battery's eight years old times 3% degradation per year. That's another 24%. That leaves me with 3% of the battery life remaining. Uh, which, maybe that's an overestimate because the car still functions, but the range is severely diminished and it can't go fast anymore. So maybe that is a good calculation. Now for the battery that came out of the 2022 car, the 2022 60 kilowatt hour range uh, was 226 miles and this battery only had 38,000 miles on it and that is 17% of the battery's useful life has been used uh, due to mileage and since the pack is only two years old there's only an additional 6% so that totals out to 23% has been used which means there's about 77% of the battery's useful life remaining. If it's going to continue at its current mileage of about 20k per year, I can expect this pack to last uh, another 120,000 miles easily in six years. And that's a conservative estimate. That's it for this video on the Leaf. Uh, next video I will be swapping the battery in uh, and showing all the wiring coding steps of that process. And then I'll see the updated range and performance and drive it around and then decide what I want to do with it once it's done.